tonight. Second stage. India's voting begins to gradually progress across the nation as a neck and neck race continues. Blinken in Beijing. The diplomacy dance continues between the US and China as Secretary of State Antony Blinken speaks with China's Xi Jinping. On the brink, Israel deploys more units as it prepares for an intensified mission into Gaza yet again, the threat failing to force Hamas to pull back. And dumpster divers. Trash pandas leave homeowners surprised with their adorable antics. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Anuvedana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on tonight's edition of World News. With the end of the week nearing, there are a lot more updates that we are prepared to report to you tonight, starting off in neighboring India with its elections. India began voting in the second phase of the world's biggest general elections and voters in constituencies such as Karnataka, Kerala and Uttar Pradesh cast their ballots in the second of seven rounds of staggered polls. The campaign has become more heated since the first phase of voting on April 19 as Modi and the main opposition Congress party have faced off and communal issues with Modi accusing the Congress of favouring minority Muslims aiming the dilute affirmative action and plan to impose an inheritance tax. In Bengaluru, Karnataka's state capital, restaurants offered free dosas to people who showed their ink-marked fingers, an indication that they had cast their ballots. The voting continues in the midst of heat waves blazing through the country. And now some diplomatic updates for you. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Chinese President Xi Jinping for talks in Beijing. During his visit to Beijing, Blinken raised concerns about China's support for Russia's military, one of the many issues threatening to sour the recent improvement in relations between the world's biggest economies. During the meeting, Xi reiterated Beijing's concerns that the United States was suppressing its economy development, adding that the world is big enough to accommodate both U.S. and Chinese development. Earlier at a meeting with China's top diplomat Wang Yi in Beijing, Wang told Blinken that the giant ship of the China-US ties has stabilized, but negative factors in the relationship are still increasing and building. Blinken's trip was met with little progress on a raft of continuous issues. Pragmatic issues like people-to-people -people exchanges, artificial intelligence and the US push for progress on the curbing of China's supply for the chemicals used to make fentanyl. His visit is the latest high-level contact between the two nations that along with working groups on issues from global trade to military communication have tempered the public acrimony that drew relations to historic lows early last year. On the road to the White House tonight, the U.S. Supreme Court wrestled with how to define the scope of presidential immunity from criminal prosecution as Donald Trump fights charges of interfering in the 2020 election. Now, despite the legal battle, we see recent polls showing strong support for Trump as he's neck and neck with Biden. And for updates on this, we have other than a world news special correspondent Suzanne Shanali from Toronto in Canada. Shanali, what's the latest you have for us? Anradi, during oral arguments, the court sought to draw the boundaries between a president's personal and official acts, suggesting the matter might need to be sent back to lower courts to evaluate the nature of Trump's actions. Such a move could further delay one of the most serious criminal trials against Trump. A decision is expected before the end of high court's term, typically in late June. Trump has argued for a broad interpretation of immunity, saying presidents may only be indicted if previously impeached and convicted by Congress for similar crimes. So how does this translate statistically? Well, fresh polls show incumbent President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump essentially tied in national polls and Trump with a tenuous lead in key swing states. The national polling average shows 40.9% of likely voters would support Biden if the election were held today, while 41.6% would support Trump. So Anuradhi, it's safe to say that despite the difficulties, Trump is still tracking ahead. Over to you.
All right, thank you very much for the continued updates. That was other than a world news special correspondent, Suzanne Shanali from Toronto in Canada. And still in the U.S., we see some legal troubles. Harvey Weinstein's 2020 conviction for sexual assault and rape was overturned by New York's highest court, reopening the landmark case that fueled the hashtag MeToo movement and highlighting the challenges of holding powerful men accountable. Activists of the MeToo movement blasted a decision by New York's highest court on Thursday to overturn the rape conviction of former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. Here's actress Ashley Judd one of Weinstein's accusers. I stand shoulder to shoulder with women who have bloody knees because male sexual violence may knock us down, but we get right back up. The 4-3 decision by the State Court of Appeals marked a stunning reversal in one of the biggest cases of the Me Too movement. The court said the trial judge made a critical mistake by letting women testify that Weinstein assaulted them, even though they were not part of the charges he faced. The judge who wrote the majority called it an abuse of judicial discretion to permit untested allegations and said the remedy was a new trial. It will now be on Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg to decide how to proceed. His spokesperson said in an email, quote, We will do everything in our power to retry this case and remain steadfast in our commitment to survivors of sexual assault. Here's Weinstein's lawyer, Arthur Idala. Because of this ruling, Harvey Weinstein will now be produced from where he is in upstate New York, back down here to this courthouse, and Harvey will, under this new ruling, be able to take the stand, will be able to tell his side of the story. Weinstein has been serving a 23-year prison sentence in upstate New York after being convicted in 2020 of sexually assaulting a former production assistant in 2006 and raping an aspiring actress in 2013. Even if he were not retried, Weinstein still faces a 16-year prison sentence in California after being convicted there for the 2013 rape of an actress in Los Angeles. The judge who wrote the dissenting opinion said Thursday's decision marks a, quote, disturbing trend of overturning jury verdicts in sexual violence cases. In 2021, Pennsylvania's highest court overturned the sexual assault conviction of disgraced comedian Bill Cosby after finding that an agreement with a previous prosecutor should have prevented him from being charged a decade later. We're back in our region now as Thailand's Prime Minister Sreta Thavisin met with his Bangladeshi counterpart Sheikh Kasina in Bangkok, where both countries signed agreements to boost trade, tourism and energy cooperation. Thailand also praised Bangladesh on its humanitarian assistance for the Rohingya refugees displaced from Myanmar since 2017. Hasina is in Bangkok as a part of a six-day official visit to the Southeast Asian nation. The leader was greeted with a welcome ceremony where she inspected an honor guard with Sreta before both delegations sat down for talks. We're going in for a short commercial break now. We'll be right back with more key global updates. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We have updates now on the Gaza conflict for you. The Israeli military said that its main infantry brigade had been mobilized for missions in Gaza, signaling a possible attack in Rafah soon. Despite the looming offensive, Hamas says Israel won't be able to achieve their goal of eliminating the Palestinian militant group. The Israeli military has begun moving its main infantry brigade south, signaling the imminent start to offensives in Rafah. It also announced on Wednesday that two of its reservist brigades had been mobilized for missions in Gaza. According to the Times of Israel, citing military sources, the two reservist brigades, the 679th Armored Brigade and the 2nd Infantry Brigade, which have been operating on the northern border, will be moved to the central region of Gaza, freeing up the Nahal Brigade to join the 162nd Division in preparing for future operations, including the planned offensives in Rafah. Operations in Rafah come despite international warnings that an attack in the region will lead to many civilian deaths, worsening the already dire humanitarian crisis. Israeli officials also said that Hamas had six remaining battalions in the enclave, including four in Rafah. Meanwhile, a senior Hamas official said that the Israeli military will not achieve its goal of eliminating them, adding that it will also not see their hostages released. 
He emphasized that Israel had been in Gaza for nearly seven months, invading every inch of it, but have not yet achieved any of its main goals. He further added that he has discussed the seriousness of a Rafah invasion with mediators in Qatar and that Israel is heading towards committing a further massacre. The senior official warned that the planned offensives in southern Gaza will threaten the negotiation talks, adding that Israel has shown that it has no intention of reaching an agreement. The U.S., Qatar and Egypt have been mediating negotiations for a ceasefire and hostage release, but have been unable to resolve the deadlock. And over in Russia now, President Vladimir Putin has reminded prosecutors that seizing assets and turning them over to state ownership is only justified in cases where failing to act might jeopardize Russia's national security. And for updates on this on the ground, we have other than a world news special correspondent Simashi Pereira from Moscow in Russia. Simashi. Yes, Anuradi, many assets in Russia have changed hands in the last two years. Hundreds of foreign companies left Russia after Moscow sent its troops into Ukraine in February 2022, in some cases selling cheaply to local management. Moscow has taken temporary control of assets owned by several Western companies including Forum, Carlsberg and Uniper. Putin told a Moscow business forum that Recently, law enforcement agencies have initiated a number of cases to return some assets to the state ownership. He added, stating, he would like to stress that they are not taking about a privatization review, but about cases when the actions or inactions by the owners of enterprises and property complexes cause direct harm to the country's security and national interests. The finance ministry, meanwhile, has listed about 30 companies in which the state may reduce its shareholds while keeping a controlled state as it seeks to foster more domestic private investments and bolster budget revenues. Back to you, Anuradi. All right, thank you very much. That was other than a world news special correspondent, Simashi Pereira from Moscow in Russia. We're in Europe now as French President Emmanuel Macron warned that Europe today is mortal and it could die. In a speech at the Sorbonne University in Paris as he outlined his vision for an increasingly assertive European Union on the global stage. Europe today is mortal. It could die. That's what French President Emmanuel Macron warned on Thursday in a speech at the Sorbonne University in Paris. He called for stronger, more integrated European defences as he outlined his vision for an increasingly assertive European Union on the global stage. We have to be clear about the fact that our Europe today is mortal. It could die. It could die, and that depends solely on our choices. Thursday's speech was billed by Macron's advisers as France's contribution to the EU strategic agenda for the next five years. With just three years left of his second and final term in office, the 46-year-old wants to show his critics he retains the energy and fresh thinking that brought him the presidency in 2017. In the nearly two-hour monologue, he said Russia must not be allowed to win in Ukraine and called for a boost in Europe's cybersecurity capacity, closer defence ties with Britain, and a European academy to train high-ranking military personnel. La tension sino the Sino-American tension has led to a growth in spending on arms and technological innovation, to the increase in military capability. We now have regional powers which are increasing their capacity, Russia and Iran to mention just two. And Europe is in a situation of being encircled, pushed by a number of these powers on its borders and sometimes from within. Macron has long called for European strategic autonomy involving less reliance on the United States, a stance that has gained greater resonance in the face of Donald Trump's bid to return to the White House. The presidential hopeful has often accused Europe of freeloading on defence, at the U.S. expense. Building a Europe that can show that it is never the vassal of the United States of America and that it also knows how to speak to all regions in the world. Many EU officials believe there is currently no credible alternative to the U.S. military umbrella. 
The French leader will be hoping Thursday's speech will have the same impact as the similar address at the Sorbonne he made seven years ago that prefigured some significant EU policy shifts. Now, at least 45 people have died in floods in Kenya since March, with large parts of the capital, Nairobi, and other major towns underwater, forcing thousands of residents to leave their homes. Collins Abondo is sifting through the rubble of what was once his mother's home in Nairobi's Madare slum after deadly floods pounded East Africa. He lost four family members in the floods, including his mother and says he personally retrieved their bodies from the debris. This is exactly the place. This is where we found them. Madare lies along the Nairobi River in Kenya. The community expects more victims will be found as floodwaters recede. On Thursday, Kenya's military was deployed to help residents and volunteers search for loved ones. The floods have displaced more than 20,000 households, with dozens of people killed, according to the Red Cross. East Africa was hit by record floods during the last rainy season in late 2023. Scientists say climate change is causing more intense and frequent extreme weather events. Officials have warned that above-normal rainfall is expected for the next week. In updates in big tech, Microsoft and Google parent Alphabet both beat forecasts over the latest quarter, with the tech titans saying they're already seeing a boost to the bottom line from AI. The AI effect is giving big tech a boost. Demand for products like ChatGPT helped Microsoft and Google parent Alphabet to beat forecasts over the latest quarter. The Windows maker is a big backer of OpenAI, which created the popular chatbot. It saw revenue jump 17% to almost $62 billion, with earnings per share also doing better than expected. The tech giant said profits were driven by customers adopting AI services across its cloud computing products. One analyst said the numbers show Microsoft's big bet on the tech is paying off. Shares in the firm rose over 4% in late trade. Meanwhile, Alphabet beat forecasts across sales, profits and advertising income. Revenue jumped above $80 billion. Boss Sundar Pichai said AI was already boosting results from its search engine. He said more and more people were using services driven by the technology. The robust numbers saw Alphabet declare its first ever dividend and a big stock buyback. Its shares jumped nearly 16% in after-hours trade following the news. The only challenge for it and Microsoft appears to be the cost of building the new services. Alphabet said its capital expenditures almost doubled over a year earlier. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news right after this. Welcome back. Here's an interesting story for you. Dumpster diving is not something that just people do. There's a special species that absolutely adore the trash trenches, to the point that they're better known as dumpster bandits. What in the world? Imagine what? opening your dumpster How? and a pack of raccoons is staring back at you. What? How? <laughs> How? Are there this many of you right now? Raccoons can't get enough of dumpsters. Social media is flooded with people who've gone out to empty the trash only to discover what's being called dumpster bandits. These critters are in serious chill mode and these guys go in for a hug. It's easy for raccoons to get into dumpsters, but getting out is the problem. I just found two raccoons in the dumpster. It's simple. They just climb up using a fence or using a simple, uh, you know, surrounding area. They jump in and then when there's not enough garbage in there, they can't climb out. But if you step in to lend a helping hand, be careful. Help! Any wildlife is uh, is dangerous. Um, if you're cornered, you know, it can bite and things can go wrong. A fishing net can scoop the critters out. Get in. Get in. In this case, a raccoon latches onto a branch. Come on. 
There you go. One woman used a broom to help a family escape, and a ladder has also come in handy. Animal rescuer Frankie Floridia gets many calls to get raccoons out of dumpsters. Here he is at work using a catch pole. You'd want to get this loop around his midsection, uh, over his arms and onto his you know, torso. All right, you're good. Another option, use a piece of wood that the raccoons can use as an exit ramp. Just make sure it's sturdy enough and on a good angle, and he'll climb himself right out. Just what? one at a time, Ow. please. <laughs> Well, raccoons are also known as trash pandas, and personally, I think that name suits them far better. But that's all the stories we have to report to you tonight on World News Wrapping Up the Week. We'll be back again on Monday with more key updates from across the globe. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend.